it's a horrible grey day but most of my channel viewers will realise that what I tend to put forward is a series of possibilities and here we are at my energy in Binbrook, Lincolnshire and another series of possibilities is both this EV charger that is set up to work with solar also and also a, a product called the Eddy which is a diverter and I'm going to go inside and t talk to Lee Sutton about the Eddy but uh, first of all let's just have a look at the Zappi on the wall just over here charging one of their EVs So here we are and Lee's kindly allowed us to look at this and he's going to talk to us about it. Yeah, so this is the Eddy device which diverts surface power from solar systems to um, mitigative loads like water heating or space heating. It's not the best day at the moment, it's very dull outside and we've got a vehicle charging outside on the, uh, with the Zappi. So, as you can see, we've got some um, import of 8.1 kilowatts at the moment, so it's waiting for surplus. But when there is surplus from the solar, because we're only getting like 100 watts at the moment, if you, if you can see that, but when there is enough surplus, it will divert just that amount to the heater and make the grid power zero. How does that do that? Is it vary in the current or is it varying the voltage? So it varies the voltage. It's a, um, a, a very same technology we call it. It's just, just our own proprietary uh, name for the technology. And it varies the amplitude of the sine wave, i.e. the voltage, and go into the heater. It's is that like pulse width? It's pulse width modulation inside the device, but the, um, the output is a pure sine wave all the time, right. just, just changes in altitude. So in other words, um, uh, one kilowatt at 240 volts, or the same uh, resistance of load, but I say 100 volts or 50 yeah. volts, yeah, it just varies the wattage. That's right, yeah, so the, yeah. Resistor is the, the, the heater is a fixed resistor. So if you put main voltage on it, it will draw the rated power. So a, 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 like an emerging to be three kilowatts generally. But if you put a lower voltage on it, the power it draws will be a lot less. Yeah. So that's how it works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it's interesting here, this has got two channels on it. So it can heat two uh, heaters, but not at the same time. So it'll do the, the first heater until the thermostat opens and yeah. then it will switch over to the next heater. And so, are they both three kilowatts? Yeah, they can yeah. be well it can be uh, virtually any size. Up to, up to three kilowatts. Yes. So um, it could be that you've got um, a, little, a bit of underfloor heating in the bathroom or something and, and, the, and the water cylinder. So you do the water first because obviously you, you know that's the most important thing. And then when that's at the temperature you can do the underfloor heating for example. Right. And is this a wired sensor or is it, I noticed there's an aerial on the top. Is but it a wired sensor or a... It's, it's either or. Um, so at the moment this one is, is connected with a wired sensor, which is here on the... On the, um, uh, the live tail. feed, yes. Yeah, so this, is, this is three phase because we're in a commercial building, so it's uh, in, in a domestic property, you don't normally get three phase. No. Um, so it's just, just around the, one of the phases there, which is the same phase that the solar system's um, on. We've just got a uh, 3.68 kilowatt solar system. So and how does that sensor work? So this is a um, clip-on current transformer, or CT, as we call it. So it's just, um, it just induces the, so the current flowing through the, through the um, cable here is like the primary winding of the transformer and it induces the current into the secondary here which um, is then fed to the unit and then there's a resistor in the unit 
which to convert that into a voltage. So. Right. And um, I suppose the clever bit is that it's got to know which way the power is flowing. Yeah, so, um, so if I turn that CT around, then, then the current will, will show, or the power will show going the other, the other way. Yes. On here. I'm with you. So we won't talk about the clever bit about <laughs> which way it goes, yeah, but it knows. It's, it's not like it's painted or anything, but there are a couple of companies doing it. But it's not the um, most straightforward thing to do. Right. Yeah. But that's the important bit, isn't it? It's got to know Absolutely. which way it's flowing and how much. Yeah. So you have to measure what we call the active power, which means the active power will tell you um, how the current relates to the voltage, and therefore you can tell the, yeah. the direction. Yeah. So um, it's not just like the um, the power you need to know the active power. Right. This is the, this is getting technical. Yeah. Now, isn't <laughs> so, it? Okay. Sorry. Right. That's technical. all right. Yeah. 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 But essentially, you just got to get that the right way around, yeah. and there's an arrow on the bottom of the of the um, CT telling you which way. Oh, brilliant. Because some of the early ones, not not particularly yours, but mm. some of the early diverters. You had to mess around to get it the right way around. Yeah, Some yeah. of the really cheap ones yeah. that I messed around with earlier on, it was just like, and all we had is one blinking LED, yeah. right? which is like, ah, yeah, which brings us really well onto the fact that we have an LCD screen. Yeah, so I've got a, a backlit graphic um, LCD display. Yes. Um, and we've um, got on there. Showing us what, what's happening on the grid yeah. and the direction. And the, the arrows change size as well, depending on the amount of power. Oh. And we've got um, the solar as yeah. well, because we've got another CT in, in, in here um, on the solar on the solar PV. So we've got a CT inside there. Yes. The solar as well, which is optional. You don't need to do that. Oh. But if you do that, you get these extra figures. So you get to know what the solar is doing, which is about 200 watts at the moment and what the house is consuming. Ah, uh, exactly. And does the, does the little smiley, does the face in the house yeah, change? It does, so it's like got a little straight face at the moment because we're using power from the grid. Yeah. But when we're using, or when we're in balance and we're not using power from the grid, then, then it's happy. Yeah. Right, yeah. The Stecker charge controllers do the same. When yes. I first saw it, I thought, just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how much processing time does it take to just add that little bit in? How much yeah. software? Well, it's nothing really. Right. right. So it's, it's worth doing. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. It just... It's just a nice feature, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. 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 Sorry about I just moved the camera there. Okay. I'm talking to my viewers now. <laughs> right. Yeah. So we also, it shows you that this is um, representing the Eddy device. And when, when it's heating, we've got arrows going to the heater. Yes. But there's no surface at the moment, so it's not doing that. But if I, if I boost it, which There's the boost button. Yeah. Yeah. Which basically means just, just put power to the heater anyway, you know, regardless. Yes. So we're now putting 1.9 kilowatts to this um, heater down here. And then this symbol is configurable to represent the load. So if it's a water tank, right. and it's a water tank, etc. And can you set the preference? Yeah, so, so you can set the priorities to which one heats first. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that, that's quite important for winter and summer use, isn't it? You yes. might want it to be totally different. Like, for instance, if you've got a boiler running, then you really would prefer any energy diverted to go into a space heater rather than water heating. And in possible. the summer, the other way around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's quite important. And the boost, um, I think that whole display is great because... If you have got solar and you fit the extra sensor, then it tells you everything, it's actually what's happening in your wider system. Exactly, yeah. 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 So it right. gives you that much more information. Right, yeah. Right. And, and you know, because you can just look, is it worth me, in, irrespective of, of what the end is doing, you could look and say, is there enough solar, is it worth me putting the dishwasher on, or shall I wait a bit longer? Perfect. Yeah. So it's, it's Perfect, yeah. Good. Or the, the washing machine. And in my books, I've always said, yeah, when you're running your own, uh, power generation system don't put the washing machine on whenever you want but yeah. 10 o'clock in the morning on a sunny day that's it yeah, yeah and you know this is more of a confirmation for uh, the rest of the family to go and look and go yeah. actually that says that so I can do that exactly yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. because yeah. often the inverter might be in the loft and, and so you don't get to see what the information no. is that this one's up here and, you know it would, it would be quite an effort to try and see up there what the, wherever it is what the yeah it's up there, right next yeah. to the ceiling. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But that's brilliant. 
Yeah, because you know, I know a lot of people, let me get back to the uh, edit, a lot of people go, why have you got an LCD screen? Yeah. But you know, personally, I find it so useful. It is, yeah. Yeah. yeah? And yeah. also, it's a cross-reference to, you can just have a brief look, yeah. and if there's something wrong with your system, like something's stuck on, it will tell you. It will, yeah. yeah. It, what if the solar system is not working? Some people don't know for months. Exactly. So it, it, yeah. you'll see straight away. Yeah. You don't see the blue light every day because it's not uh, a big sunny day. Yes. That's telling you it's not so working. You, yeah. And the trips come off on your solar wherever it is, if it's on a workshop or something, yeah. and nobody's noticed. No. Yeah. Right? So and you, you've lost a month's worth of output. Yeah. In fact, our neighbours have got one of these free. Um, five kilowatt turbines and um, oh, last year I was woke up in the middle of the night hearing this turbine going woof 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 went round the next day and went your turbine's not working it's you know it's disconnected and they went oh I don't know yeah and then one of the kids had put a Weetabix yeah and not, not the, the switch the switch <laughs> yeah so it was like they didn't know yeah right and there was nothing to tell them apart from the noise and they didn't have the experience of hearing that turbine going up to speed and then shutting down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all this sort of thing, an LCD screen, I it's really important. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. it needs to be in a place where you could just not hidden away. Yeah, and I say, you know, you know, we're trying to make the unit look reasonably attractive so you won't mind it next to you know in, in your hall or something. Right. You know, yeah. so. And with a wireless uh, connection to the uh, CT yeah, sensor, so can you have that, say for instance, on the outside of your airing cupboard? Uh, yeah, yeah, it can go. So we talked about the wired CT. Yeah. So yeah, like you say, right? You said there's a wireless option where um, uh, it's just a small box. We call it the Harvey because it it harvests the energy from the CT and powers itself, so it doesn't need batteries like, right. or or any uh, electrical wiring to um, to, the, to give it a power supply. All you do is connect the CT here and then you just clip it into uh, into the box yeah. and then pair it with the with the um, eddy. Which box. is a simple press the buttons. Yeah. 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 Uh, and then that's it, you've got you've got the uh, And then that can be anywhere around your property within can, what? Yeah. It, within, Thirty meters? Oh yeah, easily, yeah. yeah. So it, it can be several walls, it can be another building, as long as it's reasonably close. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and that way then that can be for instance, if your main power uh, input is in the garage yeah. and your immersion heater and hot tank and everything are way over the side of the house, you have the possibility of having your eddy in a very visible place, yeah. but not near your main power supply, That's right, yeah. which is brilliant. So, yeah, you could put it like, yeah. next to the air and cover something or inside the air cover, right. and, and you can uh, um, pair it. Yeah, and then it's just a matter of educating the rest of the family, which on the previous video I was talking about educating the family to, in the autumn or the spring, if you want hot water, just press the boost button anyway. Yes. Yeah, then nobody gets shouted at. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you've also got the timed boost, of course, as well. So let's cancel this one now. So in the, um, in the menu, we've got, there's lots of settings. But yes. We'll just talk about them. Common one, so we've got boost timer and I've got the radiator there, so I can set at what time I want it to come on and for how long. And for we can configure it for the seven days of the week as well. So can right, for a handball. That, that's brilliant. So, yeah, that's brilliant. All those sorts of things you mean it integrates them with the rest of your life, yes, yes. And in some ways, there's um, the outback inverters, the battery outback inverters, they're brilliant also because. You can do through their mate um, interface. You can do, you can tell your generator to start every morning at nine o'clock and run for two hours, but not on a Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just like it, the technology and the reliability of this sort of software and whatnot mm -hmm. has improved dramatically from my first experience of it twenty years ago. Yeah. Now I even I have got faith in it. Yes. Right? Yeah, yeah. And my Victron inverter, it's been running for 10 years. Yeah, yeah. Just, 
Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> Would you like to show us just briefly the the Harvey? The Harvey, yeah, I will. So this is the Harvey device we were talking about, which you uh, is the wireless option for the CT sensors. Um, and like I said, it's called it's called Harvey because it's har it harvests the energy, and we've uh, found a, a patent for that as well. Right. And, and is does that can you just order that with a package? Yeah, so it's, you can just buy it, it comes on its own because yeah. the CT comes with a device, you see, so it can right. with the main controller. Um, and that's all on your website? Yeah, you can buy it straight on. Myenergy.uk? Exactly, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. none of this dot co dot, just, <laughs> just dot, dot, UK. U, dot yeah. uk. Yeah. But we do have the co dot uk and the dot com just in case. You okay, <laughs> brilliant. I'll put a link, by the way, guys, I'll put a link in the description to that website. Fantastic. Um, so yeah, there's not a lot to it. It's just got a pair button and an LED, and it just blinks away when it's um, when it's harvesting the energy. I can connect it up and, and demonstrate right. that. And do you do you actually use the same CT scan sensor? Yes. Yeah. So you use exactly the same sensor that comes with the device. So I've got one here. Right. Just clip on. Um, yeah. Go for it. Clip on CT. Yeah. So what we do is we just wire it to the CT input. So it's not a plug-in, it's a hard wire. It's, it, yeah, the reason why is because you might want to mount this on a wall because it comes with a wall mounting bracket. Yes. And you might have the cable going through the wall and you just want this neatly on the wall, yeah? Yeah. So, so if you've got a, a, a 3.5 mil yeah. jack, the yeah. hole's got to be bigger. Yeah, and um, you might want to um, put it in the fuse board and you've got to get the wire out so yeah. it, it's it's all it is you just press the, the levers down and then put the wire all oh, right so, so it's not a screwdriver one so it's pretty Brilliant. Easy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 um let's put that in there be careful of little stray yes. bits of wire <laughs> so it just connects can i just zoom in so. on that there we go got it brilliant so you might notice they've got three CT inputs there. Yes. So you can monitor the grid, the solar, and maybe a battery system, or you can um, monitor three phases. They're completely cool. configurable, these, yes. um, these inputs. And then we just clip that around um, the... The live. We'll just assume it's single yeah. phase. Yep, so yep. And then it's now powered itself and transmitting that power information. Wow. So there's no, there's no battery to run it, no. it's just fit and forget once it's yeah. set up, that's it. Yeah, and did that pair up instantly? So to pair it, you just press the pair button on here, yeah. and then on, uh, so if you, if you press it, it will um, flash blue to tell you which channel it's on, and then it will flash red to say it's in pair mode. And it stays in pair mode for about two minutes. Yeah. And on the, um, on the, any old zapping device, you just go into the um, advanced settings. I'm just trying to catch up with you yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> and then you. That's on my advanced. Links devices. Links devices. And then add device. Add device. Yeah. Brilliant. And Brilliant. then you just you just pair it. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Oh, but now it's very interesting, and I find it truly refreshing that you've used blue. And what was the other colour? Red. Yeah, so green right. is green is good, it's it's just um, green. Channels. Green and blue, right? Blue blue is for to show you which channel it's on because yes. you can configure it to be different channels. And um, red is when it's pairing. Right. Yeah. So um, uh, on my um, uh, gas conversion on my, my vehicle, it has a little LED to tell you whether it's on gas or petrol. Right. But it changes from Red to green, and of course, being colour blind, I ain't got a clue. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. So blue is brilliant because although the, all those sort of slightly divergent colours from the norm, yeah, yeah. it it just helps everybody else. Yeah, 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 yeah. Point. Brilliant. yeah. Point. yeah. So that is brilliant, and then of course we've got the EV charger. Uh, yes. Which well, is a Zappy. It's called Zappy. Yeah, which is outside. And this is the Zappy. And whilst we're here, I thought the whole thing about the interconnectivity of this system is worth exploring. 
So Lee's going to just tell us briefly about the Zappi and how it works with the eddy and all the uh, the sensors. Yes. So Zappi is an uh, electric car charge point, um, but it's a bit different to most in that you can use, or it will only use if you wish, the surplus power from from the micro generation, i.e. solar or winter. So in other words, in the summer you can you can change the settings so that you're just using your own solar in the winter because you, you get totally yeah. different set of settings. So you, you have the way we, we've dealt with it is you have um, different modes of operation. You've got um, fast charge yeah. which is just like an ordinary charge point where it just charges the car as fast as the car can charge from a domestic charge point. Um, and then we have eco mode and eco plus mode. So in the eco modes is where it does its special stuff and, and um, tries to balance the energy um, so you're not drawing power unnecessarily from the grid. So uh, I'll just give the screen a little tap there which makes the back light come on. Um, and we've got, at the moment, it's in uh, eco mode um, and we're charging the car. It's, it's charging the car actually at uh, uh, high power because we've got this smart boost feature enabled, but well, I'll, I can explain that um, later, so I'll just turn it off for now. So we've turned off the uh, smart boost, it's just winding down the charge now to as low as it can. Um, so the, the car will only allow charging as low as about 1.4 kilowatts, that's, that's a standard amongst EV charging, so there's not a lot we can do about that. But so. Whereas we were doing 7.6 kilowatts, now we're in eco mode, we're just doing 1.3, 1.2, um, varying slightly, depends on the car. And the power we're drawing from the grid is a lot less. So yes, of course it's going to take longer to charge, but we're able to um, try and reduce what, what comes from, from the grid. And if we put it in eco plus mode, it does the same thing in that it will turn the charge up and down according to the surplus. But if there's not enough, it will actually pause the charge as well. Ah, so, so. say for instance, you know, this is an awful day, but let's say miracles of miracles, suddenly we've got a big window comes over yeah. and we start charging at 5 kilowatt. Yeah. Does that talk to the eddy diverter and because we've gone up to 5 kilowatts worth of generation, will that start charging at something like that rate? Yeah, so um, if you've got um, an eddy device as, as well, which may already be consuming the surplus, you can set the priority as to which one you want to be priority. So it could be that you want the eddy to, to heat the water if there's a small amount of surplus, yeah. but if there's a decent amount of surplus, instead you want the driver put it in the car, because obviously the electricity is a high value commodity, so you want it, you want it to put it in the car. Um, so yeah, you can set the priority, in, in fact like with any number of devices we could have several zappies, several eddies in one property and you can configure completely how that energy should be distributed. Do you need a degree <laughs> to set that up? No, it's really easy, it's just numbered, so it's like number one is top priority, number two is second priority, right. etc. And if you if you set the numbers the same, it just means to, to share the, so the same right. priority. Okay. Are you going to do a YouTube video on setting up the Zappi and the Eddy? Absolutely, yeah. We've got big plans for YouTube videos. Um, we get asked all the time and we, we will be doing it. Um, and we'll, we'll probably just split it down into separate little features and, and then do installation videos and best usage videos. And, Excellent, because yeah. the, the, the Outback Inverters, they do a YouTube channel, Outback Tech Support. Right. And all they do is cover one little bit, like how exactly, am I going to yeah, set my generator size. up? Yeah, yeah, and it's clear and concise, and that's what people want. That's exactly and what it, we're yeah, thinking. Yeah, the backup on on um, equipment and the customer care is almost as important as it the is. piece of equipment itself. It is, yeah, and it, you know, there's there's no getting around that these are technical products, so you you, you do need a bit of support sometimes. Yeah. So if you really want to get the most out of it. Yeah, exactly. You can and just leave it as a default setting, plug it in and go and, and, and not, not bother, but a lot of people like to uh, fiddle and, and, 
get the best out of yeah. what their yeah. investment. Yeah. Thank you very much, Lee. It's been very informative. Nice one. Okay. And all you guys, look at the description and follow on to the website. Cheers for now.